my friends. Welcome back to another episode of MTD CNC North America. Today, I am with my friend Hernan at Ricarte Precision. And guess what? Hernan spent over 10 years in Japan, and they've been in business for 35 years. So obviously, they know what they're doing, and they love a Japanese product. Today you can see we're in front of the Man Machine by Matsura and we're gonna learn a little bit more about how this machine has helped Hernan create success, not just since its entire ownership, but during a time where a lot of people may have struggled on getting work in and the worries that were going on and how much production was actually gonna be done. We're gonna learn so much from Hernan today. So Hernan, thank you so much for being a part of MTD CNC. Thanks for letting me be a part of it. Absolutely, my friend. So, we're standing in front of this beautiful blue machine. It is very familiar to meet people. We know that it has 32 pallets and a 320 tool changer, which allows us to run overnight. But there's so much more to this machine. And it really helped you significantly during the last year, year and a half, right? That is correct, yeah. So we um, had been looking at the MAM for, um, man, about a year and a half. Um, we did a lot of investigation. Like you mentioned, I did live in Japan for a little over 10 years. Um, have a lot of friends who own machine shops and, and fabrication facilities there. So I've, all, I've known about Matsura for a long period of time. Um, have been really impressed, you know, what they've been able to achieve in their shops and was just waiting for the right time to, to give it a shot here at, at our shop. Um, we decided to uh, move forward with the MAM in 2019 and we had the machine installed and ready to go right around February of 2020. The following month um, is when things got really bad with COVID. And uh, it, at, the, at the time, I thought we were in trouble. Um, and I, you know, I guess everyone felt that way, um, but it really helped us pull through that period of COVID in a very positive way. Um, at that time, as was probably most common with a lot of shops out there, um, we had a lot of hold on orders, we had a lot of cancellation on orders. So our job was really to focus on what our customers needed and how we needed to respond. Um, that being stated, um, we did have to hold back on a few orders, but we were also able to more aggressively uh, quote parts with shorter lead times. And that really helped us uh, stand out, you know, compared to other uh, uh, machine shops in the area. So with, like you mentioned, the 32 pallets, we're able to not only set up one or two jobs, we're able to set up several jobs. And we're able to, with the flip of a switch almost, um, start on a new job and go on to another job, you know, within, within minutes. Well, let's talk about that a little bit, Hernan, because when I hear you say that, my heart sinks at first, right? I go, oh, a big investment, an incredible product, but we don't know, we, it's uncertain what's gonna happen, right? But you made a really valid point, which I like, and that's the fact that with 32 different pallets, there's multiple things you were able to do in order to help your customers. You mentioned shorter lead times. Right. But also, if a hot job comes in, you can throw that in right away. And this allows you to reduce batch sizes and interrupt batch sizes as necessary in order to help your customers, correct? That is right, yeah. So, um, you know, again, we're, we're not a very big machine shop, um, but we handle a variety of different parts, uh, different materials as well. Um, and what we've been able to do is um, prioritize jobs a lot more efficiently with this machine. Um, you know, the, the, the ideal scenario for this, for this machine because of the 32 pallets and the 320 tools is that we're able to set up several jobs and schedule them with flexibility. But at the same time, we're able to make changes to schedules very quickly. And um, again, because of the way it is set up, this machine is built to run 24 seven. And even though we started during the COVID crisis, this machine has basically not stopped for the past 16 months. So we rode through COVID with this machine spindle time being minimum 75%. Um, at the same time, speaking of COVID, you didn't ask this, but um, with regard to scheduling 
and employees. Um, you know, we did have some issues. We did have um, some employees that you know were, were out for a period of time, and and um, we were able to schedule the machine and schedule our jobs with a lot more fluidity than we were on our other machines. Yeah, that makes sense. And. Just to reiterate for the guys that are watching, when we're talking about lights out machining, 24 seven operation, a lot of people out there still think, well, I need to have a robot and a machine, maybe a bar feed or something. You know, there's a lot of different options to get into that. But when we're looking at 34 pallets here, and I've been hanging out with you for a few hours now, I've not seen anyone on this machine. It really means I can set the machine up, I can let it run, it's lights out, the world we live in right now, where we're competing on a global scale on so many different levels, right? Sometimes it's pricing, sometimes it's the ability to even have the accuracy and precision to create a part like the MAM can do, or the fact that we can run lights out without having to stress about, you know, the parts coming off inaccurate, whatever it might be that we're competing with, this machine really helps you create that success, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um... We've been really, really impressed. Um, again, it's not something that you just drop in and let go. Yes, there is, there are some steps involved in, in training and, and like anything, the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. But with this system, um, you know, we have been very careful in who we have trained on the system. We have some very capable uh, programmers, um, but we do not have set up machinists here on the machine. Um, the most of the work is done at the programming and in planning stage. Um, but once we have the machine running, um, it is running extremely consistently. One thing that we've been really impressed with is the consistency and quality with tight tolerance parts. Um, a first article piece will be released. And I know, um, you know, Matsura talks a lot about running uh, the more complex parts in the day and the simpler parts at, at, at night. Um, we're, we're running a lot of complex parts at night um, because of the consistency. Um, the part that's running right now has a plus minus two tenths tolerance on it, and we're running this lights out at night. So, you know, again, there's a little bit of trial and error involved. You've got to be very careful with the uh, programming and the, your tool selection, your speeds and feeds. But once you have everything dialed in, the machine is extremely consistent. And the fact that we're able to program and scheduled redundancy and tooling allows us to continue running at night without being overly concerned that uh, you know that a that a broken tool will will have an effect on the part. What a great testimony in the sense of it shows to Goya. I prefer that over goes to show you. It shows to Goya how much you trust this machine. If you're talking about two tents that you're going to run overnight. And I'm sure that's not an inexpensive product. So to trust Matt Sir so well that you're going to say, okay, I got two tents. I'm going to go home for the night. I'm going to come in the morning. I know those parts are going to be good. Yeah. Well, knowing about the flexibility, the reliability, the precision, what it's able to help you do with throwing hot jobs into the mix, getting them done, shortening lead ties for your customers. Was there anything unexpected that came with the machine? Um, not so much unexpected, but... Well, I guess unexpected, okay. As far as un being unexpected, what I did notice was that everyone in the shop, of course, had an interest in what was going on. And we try to embrace technology as much as we can, but this has been a real catalyst for not only our programmers, but our setup guys, our machinists, to start rethinking the way they do things. Um, setups on other machines, being a little bit more um, efficient in the way that we do setups and, and, and set up parts and, and that, not only on this machine, but on other machines. So if anything, it's a help drive a little bit more uh, ingenuity and continuous improvement throughout the shop. That's fantastic. Well, guys, I hope you guys have all learned something like I have today. Hernan, I wish you continued success, continued growth. We understand that this machine shop, full of Japanese love of machines and Japanese machines, the growth is, it's, it's just going to be something I can't wait to come back in a year or two and talk with you again. So guys out there, this is Matt Sura, incredible testimonial. Hernan, you're an amazing person. Thank you so much for sharing it with our global audience. And uh, again, thanks for being here.